What's up guys, my name is Lurksy, welcome back to the channel, hope you guys have had a fantastic day. I cannot tell you how excited I am to start recording this video, so I'm ready to get right into it. It's October, it's spooky season, it's finally fall time for us over here after this hurricane has brought so much cold rain to Virginia and it has cooled us down tremendously. And I thought this would be the perfect time to make a review on this series now I just recently picked up this series I knew nothing about it really I didn't know who the author was or, or uh, what other series the mangaka uh, was a part of I just saw the cover online probably on Twitter and was like that's really cool and then I saw the other three covers and were like whoa those are sick <laughs> And then later I got like a tiny, tiny summary on it and it was enough based on the covers and the little summary. I started reading it and that today, ladies and gentlemen, is Die Dark. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm in love with this series. I don't know what more to say. Like the series is only five volumes deep as far as i know japan uh for for japanese uh the fifth volume is not in english yet we only have up to volume four uh unfortunately i have everything except for the first volume uh but we're just gonna pretend i have it and stick it right there but um i have the second volume look at that Absolutely beautiful. I have the third volume. And I have the fourth volume, which is my favorite volume cover. Look at that. Oh, that is beautiful. I love it. Uh, these English prints are really, really clean. I'm not exactly sure how uh, they feel uh, for the Japanese ones. But the English prints are really clean. Uh, it's a matte finish, but the text is glossy as well as the actual picture itself but the background is matte and the back is also matte and it's it's so it feels so good um yeah i have two three and four i do not have volume one because it's still not in stock on right stuff and i can't find it at barnes and nobles either so but you know the boys are going to dc uh this weekend for the trash taste u.s tour in dc we are super excited. I can't fucking wait. So uh, I think the day of we're going to stop by the DC Barnes & Nobles. Maybe they'll have it. Who knows? I really want to get my hands on it. But uh, I've been reading this um, for the past month now. And I'm all up to date. I, had, I, I couldn't wait for Volume 5 to come out. I had to keep reading it. So I went online and I started uh, reading where I left off. Okay? I love this series. This series is perfect for me. I've always been an absolute fucking edgelord. <laughs> since I was a kid. And this series is dark, alright? No pun intended. <laughs> but Die Dark is dark. And it's edgy. And it's gory. And it's bloody. And it's like a dark gothic feel and oh my god i just i love it i absolutely love it so die dark uh is created by the mangaka q hayashida i hope i'm pronouncing that right um she is also the mangaka for the hit known series doro hey doro now, I don't know anything about Doro Hey Doro. I know that it is a manga, and I know that it is an anime, and I know these are the most famous two scenes because I've seen them everywhere. <laughs> but beyond that, I don't know anything about that series. I plan to read that series um, when I get the chance. It's in my Right Stuff Save for Later cart, so... I do plan to read that series and maybe even watch it. This is the very first work from her that I have read. And 
I'm in love. I'm absolutely in love. I'm starstruck. This this is great. We're only five volumes in, and I think it's fucking nut busting. I think it's insane. I think the art style that she has is so charming. There's something about it, how she rounds off the noses and makes the eyes like big ovals kind of. I really like it. So let me stop being a fanboy, okay? Let me get right into the review. We're going to kind of split this into two sections, okay? The first section, non-spoilers as much as I can. The second section, we're going spoilers because I want to talk about this series, okay? So starting off, Die Dark takes place in space. And it takes place in outer space between a, a regular realm and a dark realm, okay? And so the uh, regular realm is inhabited by, like, two types of species. You have your aliens or, like, spacelings, which are, like, um, organic humanoids, pretty much. And then you have your robos or, or machinery, uh, puppeteer uh, kind of robots okay so those are the two species that pretty much take up uh the dark realm i mean the regular realm and the dark realm is inhabited by uh dark creatures who um they are they can come they are fully adaptable in the dark they can see in the dark and being there gives them unique powers uh, as well and in space, there's pretty much there's there's ships and shit, right? You have uh we've got hostile ships and we've got like more neutral ships which are carrying goods and cargo um to like there's malls in space and and like grocery stores and shit. So they're carrying that and then there's like hostile ships that carry bandits and trying to destroy those ships and and steal it and get money and stuff like that. And then there's like the only law or order in in this kind of in in the universe is uh, is photosphere or, or solar mass, which it's going it's we're really starting to get into heavy detail of it now with like there's there's like religious groups and cultists around it that you know um, work with light magic and they believe in destroying all of darkness pretty much. You've got the light and the dark kind of generic but i think it's done very flavorfully so yes the dark realm or the world of darkness is only able to be accessed by dark creatures and pretty much how um um they have to go through a black hole to be able to um enter it anyone else who's not a dark creature is not able to um enter the realm of darkness and if they do like a normal alien because the only ones who are able to be in um the world of darkness are the dark aliens as they're called or just dark creatures um also sentient kind of beings that they call packages pretty much uh, anyone else who's not a dark creature or dark alien cannot inhabit nor see um uh, the world of darkness it's not it will not be visible uh to their naked eye and if they go there they will be uh, mentally and physically warped and will be reduced to pretty much a shadow so it's fucking absolutely insane um and like and then beyond that uh, pretty much the currency in, in the world is is uh, is bones and there's on um, the dark realm Pretty much everything is dark. You have you have your dark flesh, which is like your weapon. Uh, so our main character, he has an axe, and that's his weapon. That's his dark flesh. And then you have your dark skin, which is pretty much their armor, and it's like a dark cloak that goes around you. And there are different tiers of it. Um, so the better ones are going to be more expensive, so you're going to have to pay more bones for those uh, than you would um, lower tier ones. And then there is also dark cores, and dark cores are pretty much what I can guess they're able to power big things like homes or ships or um, anything like that. It's pretty much like a, 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 a super strong battery, if I could say that. So, And yes, since normal uh, aliens are not able to inhabit the world of darkness, they look at the dark creatures as daemons and they try to hunt them and, and kill them. Because they fear them and everything that they have. All the followers of light fear the darkness. And pretty much vice versa. Because I'm pretty sure also the some of the 
creatures of darkness aren't really able to go into the light or certain light um, can definitely hurt them. So yeah, the world building in itself is crazy. You've got two realms, dark, regular, or light. You know, you have the darkness, you have the light, dark aliens, regular aliens, sentient beings, like packages, like little backpacks. It, it's insane. You've, you've got, you've got a, like a world order out there. You've got the religious groups and the cultists, and you even have schools. I mean, there's, there's, there's elementary schools called tree guns uh, for, for kids and stuff, which you see. And like I said, there's a mall. And then our, our planet, pretty much, that, um, that uh, our main character goes to, it's called darkness, which she has to get to by going through a black hole, like I said. And um, it's crazy just to see how it the the world building is. It's like it's like land, and then there's like it's like almost a moon, and then there's little craters, and those craters are like are like their house. It's like he's got a little couch, I think, and like a TV and shit, and he's just sitting down chilling. But like you can just look around you, and there's people over there and people over there. It's it's fucking crazy. So. Um, that's the world pretty much. Now I want to, let's go more into, uh, our main protagonist. So the story follows a, uh, young teen named Zaha Sanko. All right. This is a fun, uh, witty, optimistic, um, kid. You know, he's, he's great. He's full of, you know, he's like a Luffy. He's full of fun. He's full of laughter. He just wants to go, go, go and have a good time. Um, I apt, I absolutely love him. He, he's great. He does well. Now, it's sad and it's dark, but pretty much Zaho, Sanko has been fighting for his life since he was a kid. Um, unfortunately, there was a curse that was put on him where um, his bones, his actual bones will grant the wish of any user. So he has been targeted and hunted his entire life. He has been, he has just been surviving. He's constantly being hunted and he's just used to it at this point. But his main goal is to find who put the curse on him and to kill them. Because I think he's sick and tired of this shit. Okay, so uh, we have Zaha Sanko, great kid. Uh, and then we have his partner in crime, uh, Avankian, which is like his, his sentient um, uh, guardian, which is like his backpack. And so when I first saw a little summary of this, the little plot of, oh, the where uh, the user will grant the wish of his bones, I was like, oh, this little skeleton thing, right? That, that's his bones? No, no, no. His actual fucking bones. Uh, this little skeleton, Avankian, is just his, his guardian. And... Ah, dude, he's so good. I love him so much. He is more of the, he is the smart one out of the group for sure. He's definitely the father. Like he's, he's just, I could see him being like a, a housewife, but as a dad, 100%, like a stay at home dad, 100%. Like he'd make sure the kids have all their lunches ready for school and everything. Like he plays such a good figure for that. He is responsible. He is caring, um, He's just smart. He's more intelligent. He makes wise decisions. Like he knows when something's wrong. He knows when we shouldn't do this. But Sango just wants to go, 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 and he doesn't really care. You know, he doesn't care too much. He doesn't really think too much. Um, so they're really good together. He definitely reminds me of a uh, Shira Ashia from uh, Devil's a Part Timer. You know, the stay-at-home dad that makes sure uh, we can pay for the bills, cut down on the spending. <laughs> Stuff like that. Like, that's exactly uh, the kind of character he is. Uh, but he is a lot of fun. So, yeah, he's pretty much his, his little backpack. And he's able to, um, well, he's able to stand up straight and actually walk and everything. He's got a little handle on his head, which is really cool. Most of the time, he is on uh, Sanko's back as a backpack. And his head's, like, turning around and shit. I think it's super cute. Um, but he's got the little handle on his head. And then he has, like, a glass kind of body, pretty much. But he has pretty much a whole storage compartment uh inside of him so normally uh um Sanko will uh put his um dark flesh axe inside of him and then he will like shoot it out like a cannon uh whenever he needs it pretty much uh which is really cool and there are other guardian backpacks um that people have so the story follows him and we just kind of 
we, it starts off with the world building. You know, we have flashbacks of him going to school. We see him when he's young. We see how much he hasn't really changed. He's always, he's a kid. Even as like a mid-teen, I think he is, he still acts like a kid. And he's just a cheery, uh, go-fun, lucky kid who just wants to have fun. But that's the plot of the story, and that's the basic world. Um, you know, he's he meets people along the way. Um, and then you kind of find out there's some plot twists for sure. We're definitely getting more into the, the, the photosphere order and the light and the people behind that more as we dive in, but I don't want to talk about that much till we get into the spoilers, but I just wanted to kind of cover the basic world building and, and the main character and kind of his story and where it's going, what the main objective is. Um, I don't know, while reading this, man, it just, it just reminds me if, like, if Jonan Vasquez, uh, creator of Invader Zim, okay, if he, if he wrote a manga, like, I could see it being this, it's very dark, and it's edgy, it's gory, I mean, there's guts being spilled on walls, there's heads being ripped off, there's flesh melting and bones exposed, there's rotting corpses, there's so much, it's, it's balls to the walls insane, and I love every fucking minute of it. It is good. It's like, it's the protagonist is great, his guardian is great. Their dialogue between each other is hilarious. I love it. Uh, even the people that are now a part of their team now, they're great. I'll talk about them in the spoilers. But yeah, like I grew up, you know, watching Invader Zim and reading Squee. Um, filler bunny, uh, Johnny home, the homicidal maniac. Like I love that shit. Okay. I have a Gur tattoo on my arm. See, so, yeah, that's what it kind of reminds me of. It's just, I really like the art style. Um, it's very different because I never watched or read Dora Hey Dora, so I didn't know. Uh, and I've seen, uh, some videos and some pictures so I can like, Oh yeah, this is definitely her art style for sure. It looks, you know, it looks the same, but I love it. Um, yeah, I'm loving, I am loving die dark and i'm going to continue to read this it is fantastic i can't wait till volume five comes out in english but yeah that's going to be it for the for the first half just want to get through the world building and the main character and the main plot and everything and now we're going to go into the spoilers so time to skedaddle if you're not ready all right i give you your warning You've been warned. All right, so now we're in the spoiler territory, okay? So pretty much, okay. It all, it, I'll give you a pretty much rundown of how this all goes. We're introduced to Zaha Sanko, okay? Cheerful teen. Um, we do have flashbacks to him back in elementary school on the tree gun. We see the kind of life he lived with his guardian, uh, always having his, uh, dark skin on masking himself, trying to blend in with the rest of the children as best as possible. Uh, and he had his guardian with him as well. Um, which his guardian, uh, has to find him because at some point Zaha Sanko was just floating through space and then the school just took him in. So he finds him. And they're together. And then we meet uh, our first, um, like our first big uh, character entrance, which is Shimada Death. Shimada Death, feared by all, the god of death. This character is fantastic, okay? Like, it can grow their size so they can meet uh, uh, Zaha Sanko's size when he was a kid. And yes. Shimada is doing everything for their own will, pretty much. Um, they have to eat souls to stay alive. And there's, like, a nice scene where it's, like, he uh, Zaha asks Shimada, you know, why don't you want to kill me? You could get any wish you want. And he's just like, well, I don't want to wish anything. I'm fine the way I am. I'm just... I'm just living life eating souls. So it's a nice duo because as Zaha is fucking killing uh, corpses 24 seven, um, and getting bones for currency. Shimada's is just eating all the souls and getting a good, getting a good supper. So you see how his life was in elementary school. You kind of see how these kids of like the, probably the photosphere parents and shit are, and they're just rotten, spoiled brats. And then we cut back to, uh, the present and pretty much Zaha's trying to get 
all his shit together. He's trying to, you know, get off of Dark Nest and kind of put together a crew is what it seems and go on an adventure. So we get introduced to Dark Nest and this this planet, like I said, where they live. And we get introduced to the merchant that's here. And she just has like this big freaking skull that opens up and you've got your bones and your dark cores, which are like the batteries, I said. And then uh, your dark skins, the cloaks, the dark flesh for your weapons, and plenty more. So, and there are certain bones that you find out later on that are just super valuable. Um, that will, could buy that entire, uh, in that entire fucking inventory, which is insane. So, after that, he is able to get a ship together. And the ship looks so cool. Like this is what I'm talking about. The way the way everything is, how the darkness is like a little a little crater. The ship is like a skull dog thing, and like the inside of it's just tunnels and shit. It's all very organic, I guess, if I could say. It's it's so funny, and like he's got like the little the little um, it's like a uh, I don't know how I want to explain it. It's like a butler slash captain. You know, he drives the ship. The cord's connected to his butthole. And he talks and everything, and it's fucking adorable. But yeah, he drives the ship, makes sure everything's good on the ship. He's the captain, he's like the butler, he just he's makes sure everything's good. He's just like the head of the ship, which is so cool. And you know, once Zaha gets his ship, he's ready to go out, and he's ready to go adventure. So they go to the mall, and I think Shimada does join them for that. And you see like this mall, and it's like this, this square building thing. Uh, in the middle of space and um, this freaking machine that they're driving through there and then you just see like the hallways and it's just tunnels it's just nothing is metal or steel it's all dirt like it's all organic I don't think I don't know if that's the word I might I might be saying that wrong but it's just all dirt and nothing metal no steel or any of that really like it's all natural <laughs> which is really fucking cool I, I love how it is um so yeah, you get an idea of everything like that, and then at some at one point, we the viewers are introduced at, to what Shimada's form really looks like, um, and they are able to change their form. Uh, I think as many times as they want, they're able to just change their form. There is a scene where uh, Shimada has to change their form, and um, she now that you see that she is carrying. Um, and she is a fucking baddie, okay? Shamata death, bro. But anyways, there's a scene where she has to uh, transform to blend in with the light cults, cultists and everything. Uh, and Avakian's on her back, and he's, like, making sure, like, oh, what about me? Am I going to be cloaked, too? And if it's on her, like, it will also be cloaked. So he gets, like, turned into this, uh, like, spiral uh, kind of urn, pretty much. So that's really cool. And for a while, Shimada pretty much just joins them because she's down to eat souls and help Sanko out. Uh, they do run into some trouble on a ship where the cultists do uh, catch Zaha Sanko. And I gotta say, like, for being a, a, a you know a witty, uh, giddy uh, kid, uh, when it's down to get to business, oh, he means fucking business. Like, you don't want to fuck with him. Like, sure, he is a meatball sub loving kid i forgot to mention that yeah his favorite thing is a meatball sub which is fantastic because i recently just got the boss from subway the other day and it was great all right italian herbs and cheese boss meatball sub with bacon salami and pepperoni beautiful but yeah he loves meatball subs there is a whole chapter of him showing you how he makes his meatball subs which i think is the most charming and funniest thing ever and I fucking love it. So, this kid can eat. But anyways, beyond the meat, meatball-loving kid he has always been, um, when it's down to get to business, he gets to business. He is ready to wreck. And I think it's so funny seeing him as a kid, like, just go, Yay! Bodies to kill! Plenty of bones to get! Let's go! Like, that's so dark. Uh, but I love it. So, yeah, he's ready. You don't want to fuck with him. You, you do not like when he when he puts the dark skin on and tells Avakian to shoot out his dark flesh axe it's down to business but at some point he does get caught and I'm pretty sure he is shot with a certain light um, that fucks him up and uh, they they know who he is and they want his bones and they are melting his flesh and like 
he was very five head. They did not take his whole dark skin because he used it as his underwear. Five head. But they're melting his flesh off, and you see Zaha's bones completely exposed until um, after Shimada and Avakian have their, their feud. Uh, because uh, uh, Avakian wants him to go save him, and Shimada thinks, like, oh, you know, he's a big boy. He can do it himself. He, he can save himself. He's strong enough. And Avakian doesn't like that, and they get into a fight. But after that, he is eventually rescued. They get him on the ship. They get the shit he needs to heal him and everything. Like Because before that, he breaks out, and he loses it um he goes absolutely fucking berserk and just starts destroying everyone and it's a really cool fucking scene i really like it so but eventually they get back to the ship and it's all good um and you see like the bed you see you see slowly you start to see the ship come together after they went to the mall and got things that they needed um you see the ship come together and of course with like with all of that that was happening like he needed a better dark skin because his was just too weak and it was degrading and i think they degrade over time so they, you know they called the merchant in and they had a skull that was very valuable and she was like oh you can just have this whole thing and he's like i don't care avakian's like i don't give a fuck about the whole thing i just need a better skin for him to protect him which i love i just love that um, and then eventually the merchant is able to give them something so sh they can call her at any time they want. And sometimes they call her at a, I'm mean, pretty sure, you know what? I'm pretty sure it's a her. If it's not a her, I'm very sorry, but I, I think it's a her. I could be wrong. Um, I don't want to get pronouns mixed up. I do apologize. Um, but they, um, they do call her at certain times where, uh, it's in the middle of a fight <laughs> and she's like, what are you doing? Why? Why? <laughs> I don't want to be here right now. Uh, so that's pretty funny, but eventually they get him fixed up and everything's good. You start seeing the ship come together. They even take a tour with Zaha and, and, and the little, the little captain Butler skull dog. Uh, and he walks him through all the rooms, everyone's room. You see the living room, like open living room, kitchen, the fucking captain's quarters where they drive the ship, Zaha's room. And it, like I said, it's just all natural. It's just a, it's like a ship made out of rock and dirt like it's it's so cool it it makes no sense it's not logical but it's cool and i just like i just like it for some reason it's a really cool feel um tell uh and then eventually they meet a new guy um daymaru daymaru i'm pretty sure daymaru daymaru yeah um and he's pretty cool but pretty much he's um He's like a fugitive from uh, the photosphere, light order uh, guys, and he is trying to leave. And he wants Zaha's bones because he wants to change his name. He just wants to change his name. <laughs> so, he's really funny. He's a 16-year-old scientist. Uh, and he also has like a guardian backpack. But his is different. His is really fucking uh, edgy and dope as hell. I absolutely love the way it looks. And he is able to completely put it around him. He's able to wear it like a dark skin in full armor and everything. And he's also able to um, possess minds as well with it. So, a little busted. But uh, Demaru, he is like fucking... He's decently OP because he's immortal and he regens super quickly. <laughs> so, um, yeah... They find him, or he finds them, and they are talking for a bit, and then he's just like, yeah, no, I'm gonna kill you because I want my name changed, so go attack him. And him, him and Sanko have a bit of a fight, and then, uh, little does he know, Sanko is a dark creature, so Sanko goes five head, tears down the walls, destroys the light, so he's in complete darkness, and Daymaru cannot see him. And Sanko fucks him up. And he's pretty much like, alright, alright, I lost. I'll join your crew. I'll become a part of your team. You guys want to defeat Photosphere? You guys want to kill the, the Order of the Light, the cultists, the religion, all that shit? I got you. I'll join. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> like... 
it's great and that right now is is the team that is that is together four team members so you have Sahasanko of Ankian, Shimada of Death, and uh, Damaru. All right, and I think they fit well for a great team, and I can't wait to see where their adventure uh, starts leading to. Because in the most recent chapter, we have definitely got a lot more on like I think less of the photosphere and then more of like the order of light uh, and the whole people behind everything and the main antagonist and what their goal is and what they're doing pretty much i think their goal is just to destroy all of darkness uh pretty much and they have light that can do that so a little scary uh and they are creating mutated godlike beings as well so they're trying to have the chosen one pretty much but with all that being said die dark is fantastic i absolutely love the series and i'm going to continue to love the series it's dark it's edgy it's it just felt like it was made for me uh i do am i do and am going to still read doro hey doro because if i love this much of her work with with only five volumes i'm sure i'm gonna love doro hey doro i love her art style i love the way she tells the story and and the way she shows the world and the universe building i think it's fucking fantastic i think it's done very well i think it's super cute the moments that they have there's a lot of fun there is definitely some moments where i'm i was laughing my ass off on the couch while reading so yeah man so far dude die dark's a good eight nine out of ten i'm 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 in love with it i'm a, i could say i'm obsessed too I really, really want to get my hands on the first volume. So, <sighs> yeah, man. Die Dark is great. I can't wait to see how much it has next. And I would love to see an anime adaptation of this. I know it's way too early, but in the future, I would love to see an anime adaptation of this done, done well. Because uh, I think it could be very unique and very cool. So, all in all, Die Dark great series it's just a it just seems like it's just gonna be a really fun adventure there's a good plot thickening i think it has a fantastic protagonist with a good center um uh goal in mind which is just there at all times that is the main focus that is the main goal uh but you just have certain other elements that are starting to interfere with that and that's what makes a good story, and that's what makes a great adventure. So I can't wait to see where their adventure lies. So Die Dark, if you haven't read it, go read it. It's fantastic. I fucking love it. All right? That's all I have to say. But yeah, guys, that's going to bring this video to a close. So if you did like the video, give it a big thumbs up. Please comment, subscribe, join Lurk Line. And as always, till next time, just have a good time. Stay Lurk on my channel for more content. That has been it. Peace.